friends it is time for us to analyze ip v6 what is ip v6 why do we really need it ip v4 has got a major uh, difficulty right now first one is availability um we have exhausted the available ip addresses in ip version 4 because it's got only 2 to the power of uh, maximum 32 so you think of it it's very limited for the amount of population that is there in the world who is using internet so we need definitely an ip to get connected to internet and that that becomes a huge issue so uh, ipv6 came in there as a, a savior which has got more addresses and much more features which we will really appreciate ipv4 has got 2 to the power of 32 unique ip addresses whereas ipv6 will have 2 to the power of 128 unique ip addresses so 128 bits is something seriously huge and it is 2 to the power of 128 that you have in front of you which is really really awesome which we we'll definitely appreciate other than that there are major differences that you will have to understand between ipv4 and ipv6 i'm going to just summarize it quickly first one number of ip addresses that are available in front of you is literally very huge this is going to be the primary benefit second it is much better uh, and efficient routing that is provided through ipv6 third ipv6 um, supports you to include ipsec framework ip security framework into it which will certainly enhance the security features which was not available in ipv4 it is an optional point but most of us will certainly go with it additional flow label there is a flow label uh, there is a flow label uh, available in the packet format you can see that later i am going to show you that which will help in improving the quality of service ipv6 has got the support for ip telephony voip audio uh, video audio interactive games and most all the latest features whatever we are thinking of are all supported in ip v6 whereas it is also ensured that quality of service is never compromised in ip v6 but when you come to ip v4 one can understand the term called as best effort service ip v4 is always best effort service which means that it will try doing it if it is not possible it may not provide you the real quality of service that you want but ip v6 has got the enhanced quality of service which is definitely to be appreciated then plug and play abilities have been drastically improved in ipv6 ipv6 also has eliminated the need of the most important nat network address translation which was a major point in ipv4 because of non availability or limited availability of ip addresses we had to go with it there but now here we have ignored it so overall to summarize ipv6 is definitely efficient it is definitely technically stronger it provides you better quality of service it provides you plug and play features it provides you more than what you want now the packet format is uh, you will wonder it's a 128 uh, bit format so how do i 128 bit protocol how do i remember it now actually they have removed most of the unnecessary stuff from ipv4 header and they have made it look very simple in fact remembering and to follow the ipv6 format is much easier than remembering ipv4 format ipv4 uh, we have already seen the format so we are getting right away into ipv6 format the first field whatever we are seeing here is ip version number so as in ipv4 i have told you that we are using 4 there because it is ipv4 here and we are going to use 6 here because it is ipv6 second one is traffic class traffic class carries 8 bits here this field has got 8 bits and the 8 bits are broken into two um, uh, two divisions the first division is msb with 6 bits and the second division is lsb with 2 bits the msb with 6 bits will be used for type of service to let the router know about what services should be provided to the packet the router will get to know what services are to be provided to the packet through this 6 bits the lsb is used to the lsb 2 bits that i told you is used to indicate the explicit congestion which means congestion notification these two are certainly uh, used in the place of type of service in ipv4 you can see that type of service is used in ipv4 here which is also 8 bits here we we have it as traffic class that's the major difference and it is also 8 bits the next one is very important which is called flow label it carries 20 bits for its allocation it is used to, to identify the packet sequence which means i am sending the packet 
the packets are they coming in sequence will be tracked through this and it is also um, helping you in delivering the packets which are having higher priority so we have we have provisions to make sure that the packets which are are, are to be sent earlier can be sent earlier through this flow label provision next is payload length it is we know what is payload uh, so payload length is 16 bits here so um, there is nothing more to uh, really uh, talk about payload length next header next header is 8 bit field this is exactly similar to the protocol field whatever we have in ip v4 i am rounding it off right now it is very similar to ip v4 so it represents this this field actually represents the type of extension headers that we are going to follow in ip v6 so we need to really discuss more about it when we go in depth at this level you know that this is equivalent to this field that's it and then hope limit 8 bits is the field and there we had something called as ttl time to live and here we have something called as hope limit which is also 8 bits we will have a value there and that value will be decremented up till the time it reaches zero the packet will be alive once the packet once the value reaches zero the packet has to be discarded time to live purpose remains the same the concept remains the same but it's a little higher value that we have here and the, and the and the way that we are using it here also is the same so it is deciding the life of the packet in the network source address we know what is it destination address we know what is it both are 128 bits and there is nothing more to discuss there now how does the ip address look like when you talk about ipv6 ipv4 we have ip address something like very simple like 128.10.10.5 10.5 it was very simple and it is just 32 bits so four bytes we can easily write it how does it look like when you come to ipv6 so ipv6 is 128 bits long they are always represented as hexadecimal and they are separated by colon you can see that here they are separated by colons this is very very important they are separated by colons the colons actually separate 16 bit fields colons separate 16 bit fields this is important and most important point to remember i can always ignore the leading zeros in my ip v6 representation what do you mean by that sir 0, 0, 0, 0, 3 if i have i can ignore these three zeros and i can make it just three that's what is happening here right it's very important point and a double colon can be used to replace multiple fields of zeros what do you mean by that sir I have got F E H 0, 0, 0, 0. I have got multiple zeros here and I can just replace it with double colon. You can see that here I have replaced. Now what are you telling here? I am telling the operating system that whenever I have double colon, anything in between is zero. So this is the way we represent in IPv6. It's very, very important. Please understand we can use double colon to actually cover up the zeros which we are having from one location one point to another point and ipv6 can also be written as ipv4 format um, i mean uh, you could wonder how do we do it so we have an inst sorry i told it in a reverse way ipv4 can be represented also in ipv6 format how do you do it 10.122.132.10 can be represented as double colon f f f f colon followed by the original address this becomes an ipv6 right now that's it this is sufficient for you guys to understand what is difference between IPv6 and IPv4. How does IPv4 look like? What are all the packet contents of IPv4? I mean the header format of IPv4, uh, IPv6. Uh, we have already dealt about IPv4. Hence, this could be sufficient for you guys to proceed further. I hope I gave you sufficient information. We will come back with uh, better protocol. Uh, we will come back with more protocol information which are very useful for you to construct an IoT application. The next session uh, would be on RPL. We will see that shortly. Thank you very much for following my channel. I will come back to you with more inputs in the next video. Thank you.